These are numbers that were discovered, I should say, were brought to the attention of people in Europe back in the 1100s, the 1200s, so in other words, the 13th century, 800 years ago. These numbers were essentially in a book called Liber Abaci, which was written by a remarkable mathematician and traveler named Leonardo de Pisa. Now, Leonardo was of Italian heritage, but he was born in North Africa, in Algeria. He was a son of a merchant, and he, he was taught mathematics, the mathematics that was known, by, by a Muslim teacher. Mathematics at that point in time was largely unknown in Europe. People did not use the kinds of number systems that we use now. They used Roman numerals, and this made it terribly difficult to do any kind of mathematical or arithmetic computation. And from this teacher and from Leonardo's travels, Leonardo learned about the Arabic numerals and the great Hindu invention of zero. So the numbers that we use today, one through nine together with zero, that number system together with the place system that we use for arithmetic, for even the algorithms, which by the way, algorithm has, the word algorithm is of Arabic origin. Um, all of those things that we now use for mathematical computations essentially were the inventions or modifications by peoples living in the Muslim world at that time. And they, of course, were also the repository of much of the earlier mathematics done by the Babylonians, the Egyptians, even to some extent the Chinese. And Leonardo took the mathematics that he learned from that, from that world of that time, put it into a book and introduced it to the world. And in this book was a problem. Among, among the, the techniques for numbers and fractions was a problem. And this is a problem about rabbits and about counting the population of rabbits. And of course, you know, rabbits have the reputation of reproducing very quickly. And the problem starts with a single pair of baby rabbits. There is a very nice book by Alfred Pozamontier and Ingemar Lehmann about Fibonacci numbers. And they have a nice way of presenting what I've just been telling you. So let me just show you this little chart that shows the adult rabbits producing a baby pair. In other words, the blue arrow shows how they've aged, and the red arrow shows how the adult rabbits have produced a baby rabbit, so that at the end of one month, which you can see the months counted in the fourth column, at the end of one month, there are in fact two pairs of rabbits. Now, as I said, in the succeeding month, an adult pair of rabbits will age, and then they'll produce a new baby rabbit. Meanwhile, the original pair of baby rabbits that were produced in the fourth month age and become adult. So that at the end of that month, we have three pairs of rabbits. On to the next month, the adult pair of rabbits age, they produce a baby, the baby rabbits that were born in the previous month produce an adult. You can see that with the red arrow. And the blue arrow just shows the aging process. And so at the end of that month, you now have five adult rabbits. So with each succeeding month, the total number of pairs of rabbits increase because an adult always produces a baby rabbit and then it ages and it's still in the population. And the babies that were born in the previous month age and become adults. And if we keep count now, as I have in the third column of this table, of the total number of rabbits, what we see is kind of an interesting pattern. The numbers of rabbits, total numbers of rabbits is one, two, three, five, eight, and 13, 21. And there's an interesting pattern that arises because if you look at 
the total number of rabbits in any month. For example, uh, at the end of the fifth month, there are eight rabbits, and those eight rabbits become 13 rabbits. And why do they become 13 rabbits? Because basically there are now eight adults and now five newborn babies that are born. But if you look at the eight and the five, well, goodness, eight and five were the total number of rabbits in the previous two months. So in fact, 13 was equal to five and eight. And if you look in the next month, 21 is equal to 13 plus eight. 34 is 21 plus 13. There's a pattern. In other words, the number of rabbits in any given month is the sum of the total number of rabbits in the previous two months. That pattern defines what are known as the Fibonacci numbers. And the original problem asked a question like, well, how many rabbits are there after 11 months? If you were to count all of the A's and B's on this tree, continue it down. If you'll notice at each level, if you look at the total numbers of A's and B's, they correspond to the total number of rabbits, where A is adult and B is baby. If you were to continue this tree, I've only taken it down to the sixth month, but if I continued it to the 11th month, I could count all the A's and B's and get 144. But because one notices this pattern in the numbers, the number at one month is equal to the sum of the numbers in the previous two months. If I use that pattern, I could in fact calculate without counting all of the rabbit pairs by this tree method. So in any event, these are my favorite numbers. In nature, Fibonacci numbers are surprisingly common looking at the pattern of spirals that we'll see in uh, sunflowers, for example, you will see evidence of Fibonacci numbers. And one of the big reasons that we do is because the Fibonacci numbers are in fact very closely related. In fact, you have to use fractions, which is another innovation that Leonardo talked about in his book, by the way. Um, but you use fractions of consecutive of Fibonacci numbers, you will have very, very good approximations to the golden ratio. And it is the golden ratio that is strongly present in plants. And in fact, this phenomena of, of angular spiral winding of plants known as phyllotaxis is something that is present in 92% of plants. Uh, so uh, it's truly remarkable that this problem which describes rabbits and how they grow, and by the way, is not a very good model at all of how real rabbits behave, is nevertheless terribly important and present throughout nature and, and art and architecture in surprising ways.